Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and for being here today. Today I am going to be talking about something that I've discussed in passing, but I actually haven't really addressed fully in a video. Um, as you guys know, I've discussed binge eating quite a lot on my channel because it is something that I've struggled with more recently. However, something I really haven't talked about in depth is actually food addiction and my relationship with food prior to weight loss. I actually posted on Instagram and I was talking a bit about food addiction and I was shocked to see the amount of comments of people asking me to kind of elaborate on it. Just because, you know, this month actually marks three years of weight loss maintenance for me, which I'm really excited about. But the farther I get away from my old self, like my bigger self, the harder it is to remember the things I struggled with at that size. So just seeing all those comments from people who still struggle with it, I decided to make a video um, about my experiences. As always, I am not a doctor, um, I'm not a therapist, I'm nothing of those sorts. So this is completely my experience, um, kind of talking about how food addiction affected me in my everyday life, as well as uh, how I kind of over overcame food addiction, what I did, what worked for me. Had I known I had a food addiction at that time, I probably would have sought help. That's the best advice I can give to anyone who is struggling with any type of disordered eating, that is to see a food therapist. They're there for a reason. You can talk about all your issues with food and then they can kind of help you create an individualized way to combat whatever you're dealing with. But as always, um, I just like talking about my experiences because, you know, sometimes I help people, so. Yeah, Zach and I are about to leave on a trip. So that's, you know, we're packing. Well, we're trying. We've been sick, so we've done no packing. So before I get into my experience, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what food addiction actually is because that was one of my most requested questions when I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me questions about the topic. And that is what even is food addiction and how does it differ from binge eating? So what food addiction actually is or what it refers to is when the need to eat kind of becomes compulsive and uncontrollable. Food addiction is unique because it differs from other um, addictions such as cigarette addiction. When we're talking about addictions, there are two categories one being a substance addiction and the other being like a behavioral addiction. Food addiction, for the most part, falls within the behavioral addiction section. So what we compare food addiction to is more like addiction to gambling, addiction to video games, and that is because there is nothing inherently addictive about food. However, there is something addictive about consuming food. So a lot of people don't even really like saying food addiction and they like to say like eating addiction because when we're talking about food addiction, for the most part, we're talking about the addiction to overeating. So compulsive overeating is a behavioral addiction. However, I will note that a lot more research has been done on the topic and a lot of this research has focused on the relationship between uh, compulsive overeating and someone's brain chemistry and what this research is telling us is a lot of the pleasure centers in our brain um, That are usually triggered by substance addictions such as drugs are also being triggered by food So we are seeing more discovery um, in the sense that in some cases food may be more like a substance addiction However, I don't want to get too much into that I don't want this to be super scientific But I just want to let you know that there is new research in that area And if you're interested in learning about it It's definitely something to keep your eye on because it's very interesting shit in my opinion might just be because I've struggled with it. But for now, the general consensus is that food addiction is a behavioral addiction. All right, so to address the difference between binge eating and food addiction, they are very intertwined. So if you have one, there's a possibility you will have another, or if you have one, there's a possibility that you will develop the other. The best way I can explain the difference from my experience at least is that when I was overweight or when I was obese, I did not have a binge eating disorder. I had a food addiction and when I lost weight, I did not have a food addiction, I had a binge eating disorder. And I know that's really confusing because I just said they were intertwined. So hopefully I can explain a bit better. I gotta put my doctor pants on. I'm not a doctor. I did really bad in math. So when I was growing up, like the reason I became obese is because I was just always eating. I was a compulsive eater. I was always thinking about food. Whenever an opportunity came about for me to eat, I wanted to. It was just normal for me to eat a shit ton of food until the point that I felt sick. That's actually a very big symptom of uh, food addiction, which I'll put some symptoms on the screen, but a really big symptom of food addiction is eating until you feel sick, like not knowing your boundaries, not being able to decipher between when you're satisfied versus when you're full. So a lot of the time, if you have a food addiction, every time you eat, you will eat way too much. And that's because you kind of become addicted to the feeling of being stuffed. But with food addiction, like I said, it's constant. So you're just constantly thinking of food. Every meal you want to overeat. And a lot of the time, surprisingly, 
Food addiction comes with less guilt than binge eating. So like I've mentioned on my channel a lot, my typical experience with binge eating was I would only binge eat when an urge kind of hit me in the fucking face. I would binge eat in cycle. So I would binge eat, feel a shit ton of guilt, restrict, try to undo the damage until I would binge eat again, undo. Like there was always shame and guilt attached to the binge eating, kind of like the recognition that what I was doing was wrong. When I had, when I struggled with food addiction, I obviously knew it was unhealthy, but that guilt was not there. Like if I ate a huge meal, yeah, I might feel bad about myself, but it wasn't like tomorrow I need to fucking restrict myself because I made this mistake. It was more like, well, I shouldn't have done that, but I'm gonna do it again. So in my experience, that's how I would explain the difference. Again, my experience, I don't want anyone to diagnose himself based off my experiences. I definitely want you to seek help. But in my experience, binge eating meant having random outbursts of binge eating, followed by guilt, followed by restriction, followed by binge eating, while food addiction was just constant, always eating, not really seeing a problem with it, just accepting it as who I am, kind of going through the mentality of, I'm meant to be big, um, this is okay because this is how I've always been, people love me like this, this is fine. So that's the main difference. Um, binge eating comes with guilt. Food addiction usually comes with uh, rationalization of why your behaviors are okay. All right, so we've made it through the basic definitions, you know, what's this? What's that? What's this? What's that? So I'm going to talk about my experiences growing up and then kind of the steps I took to overcome binge eating or sorry, see, wow, to overcome food addiction because I know that's probably what I called this video. Okay. So my relationship with food has never, at least in my memory, has never been healthy. So just going back to my childhood, I remember developing really unhealthy food habits um, at a young age. So I remember, you know, coming home from school and just fucking eating everything in sight as an after school snack. This usually meant like 10, like a stack this big of President's Choice cookies, which if you're Canadian, you know what those are. But Basically, you don't want to be eating 10 of them along with like a liter of fucking 2% full fat milk and like just eating that every night after school and that just becoming the norm for me. Uh, I remember being young and putting snacks like in my pockets in my backpack and trying to sneak it to my room so like my parents, my brother, I uh, didn't see what I was eating. That is a big sign of food addiction as well is uh, hiding food as a child. And then I also remember a lot of, I guess, instances where I took it to the next level of eating too much. So I remember very clearly the first time I ate a whole pizza to myself, I was pretty young. Um, my dad and I, we went to Little Caesars and you know, like those like little pizzas. Usually my brother and I would share one and for whatever reason that time we decided we wanted two, like we wanted one each. Um, and we brought it home and we ate it. And I remember being so shocked that I could eat the whole thing and like being in pain because I was a kid and I just ate a whole fucking pizza. But all of a sudden that became the new precedent of what I thought I should eat. So it wasn't just like a, oh, I ate that. Now I'm gonna go back to half the pizza. It was, I ate that once, I'm gonna eat that again. And that's gonna be my new thing. Um, and then that carried on into adulthood, which at the end, like the worst part of it, I would be eating, uh, you know, full thick crust pizzas with, you know, breadsticks, like whatever I could get my hands on. I was eating. So that's basically my childhood. Um, just eating a lot. Mindless eating was developed at that time because I would watch TV after school, just eat, eat, eat. And that's kind of when this, the idea that I wasn't done eating until I was sickly full kind of developed. And honestly, as you can imagine, that was the hardest thing I had to get over when I started losing weight. It was hard to stop eating when I wasn't full because that is what I told myself I had to feel. And when I say full, by the way, I mean like sickly full, like gonna die, couldn't fucking stand up full. All right, so where did these habits come from? So when I reflect on my childhood, I really can't pinpoint why this started. For a lot of people, um, food addiction or any food problems originate from some sort of trauma. So whether that be the loss of a loved one, um, mental, physical, sexual abuse, growing up poor without food, um, general anxiety. Like there are so many traumas that can be linked back to a food addiction. However, I had a very good childhood. I come from an amazing family who I love very much and there's really no distinct instance that kind of triggered my food addiction. Um, no one else in my family struggles with it, so it's not even like a passed down thing. It just came out of nowhere. And I honestly just think um, it relates back to like the pizza story. It was just habitual. It was just me not being able to decipher between what was a normal and acceptable, acceptable amount of food. Am I fucking slurring a lot? <sighs> I've had a lot of cough drops. 
so yeah now I'm gonna actually go into how I overcame food addiction again disclaimer this is just what I did please seek help especially if you think your food addiction is linked to some sort of trauma um talking about those things identifying you know your triggers is really gonna benefit you but yeah I think I have five main steps that I wanted to share with you guys so the first thing I did when I decided I wanted to lose weight and I knew I had to change my diet was um, I identified my trigger foods. When you suffer from a food addiction, there are certain things that you always want. A lot of the time you're willing to eat anything because you know, you just like food, but most of the time you have your favorite foods, just like anyone, like you have your favorite foods that you like to eat way too much of. And a lot of the time those foods are a trigger for you because they trigger the toxic behavior that has been, you know, controlling your life for so long. And something a lot of people don't understand about food addiction is that it differs a lot from other sort of behavioral addictions because when you're dealing with gambling or you're dealing with like video games for example a lot of the time professionals say the best way to combat it is to quit it cold turkey just stop doing it get it out of your life show yourself what life is like outside of that addiction when it comes to food you can't do that right because you need food to live so food addiction is very difficult to overcome and it's very complex because you're trying to overcome something but you're constantly faced with it every day so that's why i think it's really important to remove at least the trigger foods because you can't remove all food or you'll die but you can remove your trigger foods so for me things that were very triggering to me were pasta cheese cheese was a fucking big one for me um i was very reliant on cheese and i went vegan and just cut that shit out i also started replacing things with individually packaged foods so instead of like a big box of animal crackers i'd get the ones with like the little packages um just because it was easier for me to control how much i ate if it was individually packaged while if it was like one big box the hand would just go in and eat the whole fucking thing i started looking for alternatives whether that was an alternative to noodles pizza whatever i tried to integrate the things i liked in a way that I didn't find to be triggering. And I also took that time to research different types of food that were more nutrient dense. So when people are addicted to food, they are very rarely addicted to salad. It's usually, you know, Twinkies, high sugar, high fat, really bad foods for you. So I decided to take that opportunity to research more foods that, you know, were a bit healthier, more nutrient dense, so I would stay fuller and satisfied. So number two is I found alternatives at restaurants I usually go to. So when I decided to eat healthier, I was in my first master's program. So just as a university student, I ate out a lot um, when I was on campus, you know, I grabbed food before going home. And that was just kind of like a reality of my everyday life because you know, I had that meal plan. Oh my God. I actually don't think I had a meal plan. I think I just threw my money into the wind on fucking Subway. But when I first started losing weight, I decided to find alternatives. So there was this one restaurant I used to go to all the time. It was just like, a, they made like bagels and sandwiches and stuff. And before deciding to lose weight, I would go and get two or three bagels, cream cheese bagels, and eat them all to myself at once. That is a sign of a food addiction, everyone. So when I decided to change, what I ended up doing was finding alternatives at that restaurant that I could eat that would satisfy me without having to, you know, get three fucking bagels. Find alternatives that you like. If you go out with your grandparents every Wednesday, find alternatives. If you, you know, work until 9 p.m. and you pick up food from somewhere, find alternatives that are healthier. All right, so number three is to plan. So we've removed trigger foods, we found alternatives, and now you've got a plan, okay? When you go to the grocery store, don't even buy your trigger foods. Plan for your success. Don't put anything in your house that is gonna fuck you up. Especially when you're first starting to get over the addiction. You guys know I'm a very big advocate of flexible dieting and I think that um, if you can, you should integrate foods you love into your diet to prevent binge eating. However, when we're talking about people with food addiction, it's not that easy. If you are trying to overcome a food addiction, you might just have to cut it out cold turkey, at least for the first little bit, and then try, you know, reintegrating it back into your diet when you feel comfortable and you feel more in control. And then also plan things to do. So if you suffer from a food addiction, you'll know that you are constantly thinking of food regardless of what you are doing. And um, you are put in a vulnerable situation if you have nothing to do because there's literally nothing to do but to eat. So something I had to do was plan, plan to go out with my friends more, plan to listen to an audiobook, like plan to watch something that will take my mind off it, plan to read a book, like do something that doesn't let your mind stray off to food. That could be like an extracurricular, that could be an intramural, like it could literally be anything. Just try to put yourself in an environment where you're not constantly thinking of food because it's gonna make it a lot easier. All right, so number four, is to tell someone. I know, no one wants to tell someone about their raging fucking food addiction. But um, if you aren't comfortable with telling someone in your life, you can do what I did, and that is create an Instagram account where I felt 
like I could really connect to people who suffered from the same, you know, things and people who also wanted to lose weight. That's why I created my Instagram account. If you do feel like there is someone in your life who you can talk to about it, do it. I had people in my life I could have talked to about it, but I was just really shy. I didn't really want to like, I didn't want to tell anyone, you know, I was like addicted to food. It was just like a pride thing and a guilt thing, but um, if you do have someone in your life, tell them. Be like, hey, can you like help me stay accountable to, you know, this? Can you be there for me when I'm having a mental breakdown? Can you like not bring me mozzarella sticks? All right, so the fifth tip um, or the fifth step that I had to overcome, that I had to integrate, that I had to do was to throw guilt out the goddamn door. So like I said, when you're like kind of in the midst of a food addiction, you don't really feel guilt. I want to be very clear that some people will will feel guilt. I didn't feel guilt. That's how I should word it. When I had my food addiction, I didn't really feel guilt. Um, however, once I realized what was happening and that I did have a food addiction and that it brought me to morbid obesity, that's kind of when the guilt kicked in but what i realized quickly is that feeling guilty for myself was not going to get me anywhere i had to kick that guilt to the door i had to start the next day as a brand new day forget about the past you know not put that shit into my brain like oh my god if i started three months ago i could be this weight or oh my god if i started three years ago i could have been this weight you have to get rid of all that negative energy so you can actually set yourself up to succeed all right so to quickly recap how i got over Food addiction. The steps I took were identifying and removing my trigger foods, finding healthier and more nutrient dense alternatives, planning my meals and keeping shit out of my house, relying on the Instagram community for support or if you have someone in your personal life then, and then finally throwing guilt out the door. But yay! Okay guys, so we are done. That is my experience with food addiction um, and compulsive overeating. I hope you found that helpful in some way always remember that you are probably going to fuck up you're going to make mistakes and sometimes it's a lot harder to deal with um but just remember life is long hopefully and you have your whole life to try again and something i read when i was big that has really resonated with me and stuck with me is that i used to look at what I wanted to change in terms of how long it was going to take so i was like i want to lose 140 pounds that's going to take so fucking long and I was like disgusted and I was like, I don't want to do that. However, I read something that said, what did it say? Mm, time is gonna pass regardless if you change or not. And that is 100% true. I would rather, you know, work to accomplish something in three years so that in three years from now, I can look back and say, I fucking did that. Then look back in three years from now and say, damn, I wish I started because then I'm gonna have to start then. So am I making sense? I have brain fog. But yes, guys, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. Um, it really helps my channel out if you comment and raises the engagement and it puts the video out to more people, I think. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I plan on uploading lots of videos in the coming weeks and I will see you soon.